Now, as I mentioned, we are going to add an ACIA for communicating the 6502 to the computer. So we're going to lay out the decoding on the board about here. That looks about right. Maybe I can get this closer. Yeah, I'm satisfied. So I have here the two L and the two HC one thirty eights, which is going to do the decoding. I got the ACIA, a uh, Rockwell, and uh, not the Western Digi uh, Design Center uh, one because of the transmit bug, and you probably already know about it. And uh, I got the uh, Max uh, 232 here. And I'm going to hook it up to um, a DB9 uh, a breakout with uh, a little pigtail that I made for it. So, time for a montage.
let's uh, let's check to see if it works. Ready? Okay, I boot it up. Ah, nah. Did it again. Reset, prompt, and then nothing. So it's not the CPU. I wasn't sure, so I took out the ZIF socket. I put the ROM, the EEPROM directly on the board. Wasn't sure if the connection was okay. I will take out the NVRAM just to be sure if that's not an issue. In theory, it should still work without. Yeah, so I'm getting. I'm getting a prompt. You can tell that everything works. One, two, three. Uh, disassemble. Of course, there's nothing because it's all zeros. Let's disassemble at uh, address 1000. Yeah, well, there it's junk, of course. Let's disassemble. Disassemble at address 8000. At least it's valid code. And I, I recognize most of the code there. Uh, next, next page, next page, next page, next page. For now, it seems to be pointing to the NVRAM. No, it reset. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't it. Uh, I'm going to start backtracing, I'm going to start removing stuff that actually doesn't belong there anymore. Reset. Just in case I forgot to mention it, I removed the, um, the buffers and just uh, bypassed everything. So it, it, it's actually straight line to the components. Let's try changing the ACIA, see if that changes anything. I'll go grab one. In my parts drawer, let me see, drawer, 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 which drawer should it be? Uh, ACIA, no, that's the via, ah, oh, UART. Should I try, no, I won't try the Western, uh, Design Center one. I'll use another Rockwell. All right, see what's going on? It just, it's spewing out. I didn't do anything. It's, like, it's as if it's saying, no, don't change me. This is randomly doing it. It's just disassembling at specific address. It's as if I'm typing D. It's not random, actually. That is really weird. You see that? I really wish I could explain this. Of course, now we're at uh, 5,000, there's no memory. Because that's normally where the bank, and then poof, reset. Power off. And uh, try to remove this as elegantly as possible. Got wires in the way. I should use a screwdriver. I need to have a better chip puller. You know those ones like that look like a little curve shaped screwdriver that can also fix bent legs. I'm afraid that if I don't want to move any wires there carefully. The line pin one is here. Okay, click it there and start it again. All right, let's see if there's any issues now. Mm. 
Oops. Test. All right. And of course, okay, I took out the NVRAM, that's why I'm getting an error. Uh, and it's at the correct address, that's perfect. Um, read memory, disassemble. Ah, uh, no. No, that wasn't it. That's kind of disappointing. All this work for it to do this. Just want to rip everything out. I'm probably going to do it. <laughs> because you know what? I, I'm a bit tired of doing breadboarding. This is like, what, my third or fourth version of it. 